Today on Grow It, I'll show you how to start growing your own chili plants at home. It's nearly the end of February and that means that if you haven't started growing them already, it's a good time to start off your chili plants. But only if you've got the space indoors, a heated propagator or a heated greenhouse. You can get a really good head start on growing your chili plants and extend your growing season as much as possible by growing some great strong plants for spring. Before we get going with today's video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all the plants that I'm growing this year, including these chili plants with loads of guides and ideas to make sure that you get the most out of your plants and your garden this year with new videos every week. As always, I'll make sure that you can check out all of these seeds in the description just in case you fancy growing some of these varieties for yourself. Peppers are the fruit of the flowering plants from the cat Capsicum genus, which is part of the nightshade family Solanaceae, and this makes peppers close relatives of tomatoes, aubergines, potatoes, and tobacco. The fruit of the pepper plant is technically a berry with a variety of different sizes, colours, and shapes. The smaller varieties, known for the heat, are usually known as chilli peppers or chilies, and the larger and mild varieties are usually called bell peppers. Sweet peppers are in the UK, we just call these peppers. Peppers are also used to make the dried spice paprika, and they can also be preserved in powdered, dried or pickled forms, and they're used in all the different forms in cooking all around the world. When it comes to growing peppers, the ideal growing conditions include a nice sunny position with warm loamy soil, which has a higher sand content and a lesser clay content. Ideally, you want to keep them around 21 to 29 degrees Celsius, which is 70 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. And pepper plants tolerate temperatures down to 12 degrees Celsius or 54 degrees Fahrenheit, but they are sensitive to the cold and they'd be really unhappy at that temperature. Pepper plant flowers can self-pollinate, so they don't need wind or insects to move pollen around between the flowers, but the internal development of the flower can have an effect on self-pollination. So it is beneficial to either give the plants a little bit of a shake or go around the flowers with a paintbrush to move the pollen around and make sure that the flowers are pollinated. I did make a guide on this last year showing you how to do it and how to do it with the paintbrush and everything and the peppers all turned out fantastic with loads of growing on each plant. I'll leave a link in the description as well for that video just so in case you want to go back and check that out. It's worth keeping in mind that once you start seeing high temperatures above 33 to 38 degrees celsius which is 91 to 100 degrees fahrenheit pollen does lose its viability and the flowers are much less likely to pollinate successfully so that is something to be aware of and if you do have pepper plants in your greenhouse in the summer keep an eye on that thermometer just to make sure that they are still viable for pollinating The first thing that we think of with chilies is heat and that's one of the main reasons for the cultivation. The heat from chilies is caused by an active component called capsaicin. It's a chemical irritant for mammals which includes humans and it causes a sensation of burning in any tissue that comes into contact with it. Capsaicin is produced by the pepper plant and it's most likely as a deterrent against certain mammals from eating the fruit as the teeth are likely to destroy the seeds. On the other hand birds are completely unaffected by chilies as they are the plant's preferred method of seed distribution. Distribution. The concentration of these heat causing components is what determines the heat of the pepper and it's normally measured in Scoville heat units. The higher the number, the hotter or more pungent the chilli. This year I'm planning on growing a load of different pepper varieties and I'm really looking forward to seeing how they turn out and here's some of the varieties that I'm going to be growing this year. So first off I'll be growing some bell pepper plants and these aren't spicy at all and they're really tasty treats for my guinea pigs and considering how many grow per plant in a season it's better than paying 50p each in the shop. Next up I've got scotch bonnets coming in with around 100,000 to 350,000 Scoville heat units. These should pack quite a punch despite being the mildest chilies that I'm growing this year. Then I've got Trinidad Maruga scorpion and these are seriously hot re reaching 1.2 million Scoville units. These held the world record for the hottest chili and that was until the next variety came along in 2011 and took the crown, which is Naga Viper. And these chilies clock in at just under 1.4 million Scoville units and are the second hottest chili in the world now. But don't worry though, I'm growing those as well. And the world's hottest chili since 2017, Carolina Reaper. And these are a cross between habanero and ghost chilies. And these measure almost 1.6 million Scoville units, which is ridiculous. And I'm really 
excited to give these a go and see how they all turn out. Amazingly, despite Carolina Reaper chilies producing such high pungency ratings at just under 1.6 million Scoville units, they aren't the highest rated plant-based heat. A substance called resiniferatoxin, which is an alkaloid present in the sap of some species of euphorbia plants, is 1,000 times as hot as capsaicin and it would have a Scoville heat rating of 16 billion. To put that into context, I'm sure you've seen people eating Carolina Reapers for challenges or durs, and while they usually look a bit daft while they're expelling the contents of the face, they'll usually be fine after a couple of hours. With resin and ferrotoxin, a person would only need to eat less than one millionth of a gram to cause severe internal chemical burns, and eating just over one gram of it would cause a stupendously spicy and painful death. So with that in mind, let's get these seeds in some soil and see what we can grow. So I'll be sowing these just in some cocoa fibre in these little plastic tubs and I pretty much use these for everything because they've got the perforated sides and the lids and they're just like little propagators. So generally speaking, cocoa fibre is an ideal medium for germinating chilli plants as it isn't as nutrient dense as soil or compost and it has good moisture retention as well. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to get some of this for yourself. It usually comes in a big block or in small discs which you soak in water and it expands in size like loads of times over. So first I'll just fill up these tubes with some cocoa fibre and I'm just going to put one seed in each cell for each of the varieties because you just don't get that many in a pack. I'll be doing the same process for all of the varieties. Here's the Scotch Bonnet seeds which are also known as Bonnie Peppers or Caribbean Red Peppers and they're a variety of chilli pepper named after the resemblance to the Scottish Tammy Bonnet. Scotch Bonnets are really quite hot with a heat rating of 100,000 to 350,000 Scoville units. Scotch bonnets have a sweeter flavour and they're often used in jerk dishes and other Caribbean dishes. As they ripen, they'll gradually change from green to yellow to scarlet red and some varieties of this pepper can ripen to orange, yellow or even brown. And finally, I'll just add a bit of cocoa on top just to cover the seeds over and then that one is done. Next up I've got the Trinidad Maruga Scorpion which is a chilli pepper native to the village of Maruga in Trinidad and Tobago. At one point it was officially the hottest pepper in the world with a heat rating of 1.2 million Scoville heat units. And while it's not quite as hot as the Butch T Trinidad Scorpion at peak heat, it is more consistently hot on average. Aside from the heat, the Trinidad Maruga Scorpion has a fruity flavour and the pepper can be grown from seeds like this in most parts of the world. In the UK, the growing season is usually from the last spring frost to the first frost of autumn, at which point the frost kills the plants. But you can get head start indoors if you've got the space and indoor plants can be kept going all year round. Paul Bosland, who's the director of the Chili Pepper Institute, said that you take one bite and it doesn't seem so bad, but then it builds and it builds and it builds, so it is quite nasty. The scorpion peppers get the name because at the pointed end of the pepper, it looks a bit like a scorpion stinger. There we go, and on to the next variety, which is the Naga Viper. Now, this is a stupendously hot chili pepper. In 2011, it was recorded as the world's hottest chili by the Guinness World Records, with a rating of just under 1.4 million Scoville heat units. The Naga Viper was created in England by a chili farmer called Gerald Fowler of the Chili Pepper Company in Cumbria, and he hybridized hot chilies like the Trinidad Maruga Scorpion and the ghost pepper. Apparently they're sweet and fruity with the heat building really, really slowly to full power. The main drawback of them being the products of hybridizing is that they can be inconsistent in the heat and shape, but even at the low end of their expected heat, there's still enough to cause some serious pain. And the last variety I've got today is the Carolina Reaper, which was developed by South Carolina breeder Ed Curry in the United States. The peppers are red with a bumpy texture and small pointed tail and they've been the Guinness World Record holder for the hottest pepper since 2017. The official Guinness World Record heat level was over 1.6 million Scoville heat units and it's worth noting that the figure is an average for the whole tested batch. The hottest individual pepper was measured at 2.2 million Scoville heat units. Again, this one is described as being sweet and fruity by the ones crazy enough to eat them. And in April 2018, a guy was actually hospitalized for a few days after eating one Carolina Reaper pepper in a contest. And he had massively severe headaches, which were caused by the constriction of blood vessels in his brain. And it was likely that it was caused by the stress of eating such a hot pepper. When it comes to growing Carolina Reapers, the peppers have been described as a good all-rounder to try at home in the UK. And you're looking for temperatures of at least 18 to 20 degrees Celsius. And it's best growing them in 30 centimeter pots to restrict the growth and produce fruit early. 
In May 2017, Mike Smith in Wales, working with Nottingham Trent University, claimed to have surpassed the Carolina Reaper with his Dragon's Breath Pepper, which has been tested at 2.4 million Scoville heat units, and they have applied to the Guinness World Records for confirmation. However, in September 2017, Ed Curry, who cultivated the Carolina Reaper, claimed to have bred a stronger pepper known as Pepper X, which he describes as being twice as hot as the Carolina Reaper, which would make it like have 3.1 million Scoville heat unit um, but this hasn't been confirmed by lab testing yet and that is all of those seeds done I'll be taking these home and growing them in my heated grow box for the first couple of weeks before I start potting them up into individual pots well it's just started pouring it down and it's gone really dark so that's it for today and hopefully you're feeling inspired to try growing some chilies for yourself and as always don't forget to subscribe to my channel to make sure that you don't miss out on any of my new videos and if you plan on growing any chilies for yourself let me know about them in the comments and I'll see you next time